I'm here, uh, Professor Alvarez. It's a, a great honor to see you. Thanks again for joining our conference. Uh, this very interesting topic, motivating students and developing competences in engineering education. Uh, and uh, we are very happy to give the floor, Professor Alvarez. Hi, hello. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, and do this presentation today. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. I'm hailing here from Sao Paulo, Brazil. It's a very different uh, um, location and, and a very different uh, season. We're still on the, we are heading towards summer, so uh, I, I'm afraid that you are going to your winter, so I'm going to present a little bit about, first about the, our university and the city of Sao Paulo. If you don't mind, I'm going to put the camera off and I'm going to relight the camera to save bandwidth. Uh, okay. No, it's okay. You, you, we have very stable connection. We, you, you can use camera. Oh, okay. Okay. So let's use the camera. Good. Okay. Just a little bit about the city of Sao Paulo. It's the largest city in the in Latin America, one of the mega cities in the world. The University of Sao Paulo is uh, one of the main universities in Latin America. Uh, and if you want to know a little bit more about our university. Here is the website. It has a version in English and in Spanish, and then you can can get more information about the, the university. I'm I'm part of the School of Engineering, and I've been researching a little bit in other topics, but also on engineering education. So uh, my 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 main uh, uh, points for this uh, presentation is. Um, how to keep students engaged, how to present additional material to what is normally seen in classroom, and how to engage students to read and debate this additional material. Uh, what we are observing uh, today is uh, a, a, a phenomenon that is education has uh, evolved has uh, uh, seen many modifications, but what is the, what do, how we interact with the students? Uh, we have the personal contact, we share knowledge, you use the dialogue, and we do the observation. One of the best ways to evaluate our students is how to, is to observe how they perform, how do they do the tasks, and then you work as a mentor. So I choose these pictures by, by, by Rembrandt, and, and this is a, 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 the anatomy lesson, and it's pretty much a very effective way to, to educate until to this day. So it's quite amazing that uh, the painter could, could grasp how a classroom, a good classroom dynamics uh, evolved. But on the other ways, it's not always perfect as on the Rembrandt painting. And when you are in the classroom, we observe things like detachment, boredom, distraction, and you have the teacher or the instructor preaching. So I got this image from the medieval age, and it's quite interesting and funny to see that in the middle of the classroom, uh, we see people detaching, uh, detaching and sleeping. <laughs> and this is something that was observed more than 1,000 years ago, and then we, we still see today in our classroom. So the challenge of the teacher pretty much is an old time challenge. Some people are more successful than others. and. Today, you have a new challenge, that is, the attention span of the students has reduced by several uh, 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 reasons, but we do not need to have these students of today engaged, and he or she, they must learn 
other things beyond the content of the class. So pretty much you have seen this in modern days classrooms. A uh, lot of people that have to, 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 to rely on, on a very sometimes inefficient way of, of, of passing the content and without much engagement between instructor and student. So, a few problems. How to develop a closer link between students and structures? Uh, we do have an age gap. This is a problem in today's world. This wasn't a problem when I was a student 35 years ago, but today this is a problem. The age gap between instructor and students. How to bring more information and content to the classroom? How to make the students familiar with material that is more advanced because we still have the same five years to form an engineer, but the content is becoming more sophisticated. Uh, the problems are becoming more sophisticated and complicated, so you need to put more information and content into the same time in the classroom. We would like to have students more active, so they need to discuss what is happening in the course they need to, dis to discuss the subjects so they can have questions and then the process becomes more dynamic. We want, as I said, to have the students more proactive. And this is something that the employers want. They want people that are more proactive, that are more, uh, uh, that, is, that are better to change, to, to look for information to look for, for uh, 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 to pose questions. In any way, people that are more active in problem solving too. And of course, you want to improve education, but want, we do not want to lose quality. And we want, and we, we still want to be rigorous. You want to keep the highest standards. So one proposal was if you, cannot win maybe you cannot maybe you can join them so I, I i had an experience to engage students using social network and the idea was to reduce the gap between students and and uh instructor so the idea is to also to have the discussion out of the classroom environment so i understand that we all understand that social networks are part of our daily lives today we use social networks to dating, use social networks to get information. I mean, we, we, we interact with many different people by social networks. This is a reality of our life. You cannot um, hide it anymore. So why not to use social network in the education environment? So I give you some data on uh, for the Brazilian uses of, uh, of social network. The average time is about 21 minutes. It's higher, 6% higher than the world average. So Brazilians use social network a lot. 45% uh, of people are very active in social network. And we are the third country in using, in using Facebook. So in Instagram and Twitter, uh, Brazil ranks very high respective to, this, to its population on the use of social, net, social network. So I decided, why not? Uh, engage these students by using social network. Uh, this is not a new idea. Many people have tried. They are, there are extensive uh, uh, publications on that. Uh, but how do we, how you do that effectively and how this do compare to other tools such as Moodle? Okay, additional objectives. Provide additional content to the students. I would like to provide complicated case studies to the students. That is difficult to put in the classroom because of our limited time frame. I wanted the students to, 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 to engage in the discussion and I wanted to hear what they are discussing. Since I cannot leave 
with the students 24 hours a day. Maybe if I can hear indirectly by the interactions in social network, I couldn't understand how they are studying, how they are dealing with the material and with the subjects. And of course, I also I, I managed to bring industry and all the professionals to be in touch with the students so they could discuss with other people, with other professionals, which sometimes is difficult. So one example, uh, the example of bolted joints, we had the lesson on bolted joints and then I wanted to put them a case, a real case in which a bolted joint failed. Uh, this is a very famous case in which the windshield of the aeroplane detached because the maintenance was incorrect and they used the wrong, wrong bolts, wrong tightening procedures and the pilot was almost ejected from the aircraft. So I provided the students a video uh, to give them some idea of what happened. So everybody had to watch the video. And later I shared with the students uh, the official report of the investigation. And then we decided to, we started to, to do the the discussion on the case based on the official documents and based on the uh, on what the students have seen in the classroom the analysis of the, the investigation is very important because the students can see that sometimes the problem is not only technical there was an organizational issue involved on the on the reasons why they used the wrong boats why did they use the wrong boats this was this was not only technical so this is an opportunity to show that real life problems are not only uh, technical, uh, they have a, a, a surrounding uh, uh, scenario in which many other factors uh, uh, interact and the engineer has to be aware of that because it's not only technology, but we are dealing with people and people do mistakes. So why do they do that, that sort of mistakes? So the problem was an also a way to, to train the students, to prepare the student to a very complicated situation when uh, a, 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 an accident happened and why it happened and, and, and how you avoid this kind of accident, accident happening again. So assignments, students were, uh, had, to be, had to make basic forcing stress analysis with the data from the report. Uh, did the analysis agree with the, fact that, with the facts pointed on the report? What modifications could be proposed to avoid the accident? So the students had to do a, a, a written text on that. Then we had the case discussion and we, we share additional information using the social network. So you could discuss the ideas behind or the, or the, or the facts behind the, the accident on social network. So this was a very fruitful discussion. I brought, I brought in especially for my airline and, and it was very interesting to understand how is the maintenance procedures in today's airlines and how do they do avoid these the errors in, uh, that happen on this accident? We had also other discussions, one on riveted joints, again, a problem with an aircraft uh, on uh, Japan Airlines flights, Flight 23. And also we had a discussion on loosening of bolted joints. And then we have the a, 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 a study on the Juncker test that is a way to, to, to go into detail on, on how the bolted joints uh, lose tight. So we got a, a, a subject that is shown in classroom in two classes in a couple of hours. And we had a discussion of, of, of two weeks on a very complicated subject uh, that is uh, uh, involved with, uh, with uh, the subject of the classroom. Another way to engage students is the extracurricular activities. Extracurricular activities are praised by many 
but they have a very few support of the faculty and the institution. Uh, employers like students that took part in extracurricular activities because they see these kind of students that people that are a little bit more proactive and that have uh, developed more complex system. So they, they, they also have a, 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 a aspect of character building of teamwork skills. So many people like it. So this is the feedback that we got from companies from companies and in alumni. So we would like to have these students included on the academic uh, uh, curriculum. So how do we do that? We, we want to have recognition to students, academic recognition to the students and faculty that are involved. But at the same time, we do not want to destroy something that the students do by their own initiative. Sometimes the interference of the institution ends up destroying the initiative of the students. We do not want to lecture the students on the projects. The students have to belong, the projects belong to the students and not belong uh, to the faculty or to the instructor. And we want to include some content to help the students and their teams. So here are two examples. You have the formula student team, and uh, they have to design, build, test, and put into the competition a race car. And of course, the manufacturing is done by the students. Students have a, a, a machine shop and, and a, a laboratory where they can uh, put their hands on and do everything. So everything is done by the students. So we, we did a course in which the students have to do a project development, not the main subject of the team. So they're not going to do the, the race car in the classroom, but they are going to work on auxiliary projects to the team. So organization tools, uh, equipment that is going to be used uh, to manufacture the team or to test the team or test procedures, things that are auxiliary to the project. The course was volunteer joining and optional. And the idea was to develop other skills like presentation skills, visual programming, how to, to do the presentations. We have weekly meetings. So this is about 15 hours per semester. And pretty much it was organizing, organizing in sessions of Q&A or question and answers. And the instructor had the, work, uh, had the role of a mentor. The idea is, was to guide the students, not to preach and not to lecture, but mentor. The evaluation of this course was done by the presentation. So the instructor evaluated the presentation. The students had to provide a written report. Uh, they had to submit and work to have approved the paper article to a conference. Normally, it was the SAE conference in Brazil that is related to automotive engineering or to aeronautic engineering uh, uh, topics. And of course, they have two options of, of, of grading, pass or fail. So it was pretty much like their own competitions where you don't have any, any ideas of, of, of having a mixed, uh, it's pass or fail based on what they present. Some conclusions and final remarks. Uh, for the first experience, the students pointed that at the end of the semester, the additional material was were very good. So they could see a real case application of what they seen in the classroom. The discussion was indicated by the students as a better way to understand problems because they have to go back to the subject several times to better understand what was going on with the real life project. So they have to revisit the theory several times. Uh, uh, I got one feedback that the students went to the final exam without reviewing both the joints. And this student did excellent on the exam on the question of both the joints, even without having to review it 
at the eve of the exam or very close to the exam because this guy had uh, continuous uh, 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 examination of the material during the semester. Uh, the idea uh, of losing social network was very good because the students are very familiar with that. So they have no problem and they use it. They adopted it very easily. Uh, it was no problem to them to, 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 to be part of the, of the social network related to, to, the, to, the sub, to the classroom. And the page statistics, so the social network too, they have a statistic so I can see how many people engage with the web, with the, uh, with the page. I can see how many people uh, read the comments and even I can see uh, uh, how, many, uh, uh, how many people from outside the classroom could uh, see what was going on on this uh, on this page for the other experience uh, 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 oh okay sorry carry on with the uh, with the social network thing uh, the instructor had another opportunity to evaluate the students not only during the exam uh, I had the opportunity to see what the students were discussing what they are talking about uh, uh, regarding the subject so i could identify misconceptions i could identify errors i could identify uh, things that i could intervene directly uh, and, and see what was the problems what they are not understanding from the textbook what they are not understanding from the uh, accident report so i could have immediate uh, inter interaction and intervention on the students instead of only paying attention to reports, tests, and exams. So I had a, a, a opportunity to watch the process happening. So this is very important to, to, to anyone that is involved in, in preparing people to, to, in education. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, uh, I would say in Portuguese, muito obrigado, and I'm open to your questions and comments. Uh, thank you, Professor Alvarez, for a very enthusiastic and interesting, fruitful presentation. Uh, please, I ask uh, our audience uh, about questions. And yes, Natalia Victor Trifanova, the Dean of International and Business Department, please. Yeah. Dear Professor, uh, many, many thanks for your report because your report is uh, dedicated uh, for most for me uh, to uh, our methodological aspects. Um, my uh, question uh, is connected with the uh, reason and the, the resource of uh, student motivation. Dear Professor, pleasure or pleasure, pleasure from charismatic of uh, teachers, uh, pleasure from uh, horizontal contacts, pleasure from uh, classes atmosphere. This is pressure, pressure from uh, requirements, the hard of uh, working process and the requirements from teachers. Uh, please choose. <laughs> I do agree with your point. It's a balance between pleasure and pressure. Uh, 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 and sometimes you need to, as I said, uh, uh, we deal with this challenge for a very long time. Education has seen this challenge or this balance between pleasure and pressure. Uh, I, I managed to, to get the students working with uh, 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 material that they do not normally work with. That is a report of an uh, accident uh, uh, in industry. It's a very complex document. It's a very different from the textbooks, questions that they deal with. Uh, but on the other hand, it is important because it shows to the student that every real life 
problem in engineering. It's very complex and goes beyond the technical. This was what I wanted to convey. And it's quite difficult to say that to this. I can spend many hours talking about my previous experience. Uh, they had to leave the whole thing, or at least, at least to experience a little bit of that, to better understand what I'm meaning, what, uh, what, what I'm saying. So uh, uh, they, they, they managed to have this experience with someone evaluating. So I always say to the students, look, the worst thing that can happen to you at the university is to fail in a subject. In real life, it means losing your job, losing the means to maintain your family and to raise your children. So uh, it, now it's time to, 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 to learn because pressure will be much higher when you are in you know, professional life. So let's have a little bit of pressure here that I can guarantee you it's not comparable to real life pressure is. But again, I mean, uh, we try to have the, the, to include new methodologies to, to make the students to deal with more complex stuff in the classroom. Okay, thank you, Professor Alvarez. Uh, do we have any other questions? And I think we collect questions as uh, last year, and uh, we will be very happy to um, not just to communicate, but to, to make a good contribution in our common goal to not just teach our students, but to develop our students and to be ready to face with all obstacles in this life and to be ready for any challenges in, in the engineering, in the economics field and management as well. And uh, we are very happy to see you once again. And uh, we uh, also will be pr very proud to see you next year during this conference. And we are waiting for, uh, for your um, text so uh, all our students and readers can attend your information and your ideas. And I'm absolutely sure that we can share our experience uh, during um, teaching students. And thanks a lot once again. And we pass uh, a little bit snowing weather to, to sunny Brazil. Thanks. Thanks you a lot. Thank you, Professor. It's almost, it's almost 30 Celsius right now. So uh, uh, I wish I could have a little bit of your cool weather. <laughs> yes. Yes, you're yeah, right. So, uh, yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Professor Alvarez, and we are uh, looking forward to see you again next year and in other time as well. Thanks a lot. See you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Have a good day. <laughs> Thank you. Same to you.